there is a lot of talk through social media posts, through articles, through workshops, through actual talk from both the self-help world and the pseudo-psychology world about how if something or someone is bothering you or quote unquote triggering you that you should avoid it or them or remove it or them from your life. Now I say triggered in air quotes because I'm not talking about triggered in the actual clinical PTSD sense of the word. I'm talking about how many of us have started to refer to the word, word triggered as a describer of having a sudden sort of intense emotional experience brought on by what we believe is something that's happening in the world around us. So something happens, it triggers something in you and you have an intense emotional response to it. That's what we are talking about here. So just wanted to clarify that when I use the word triggered, that's what I'm meaning, not referred to it, referring to it in the PTSD sense. But I want to talk today about how this advice to avoid anything or anyone that triggers you is not helpful. And although it might provide relief temporarily as you just sort of remove that thing in the, in the, in the, in the moment, is actually likely creating bigger problems overall and keeping you stuck when and where you don't need to be. And so this today is a deeper teaching and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about when this is appropriate, when to start practicing what I'm teaching today in just a second. Um, but there's a motorcycle outside the window so I hope you can still hear me. Um, but yeah, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So stay tuned for that. If you're new here, Welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, introduce yourself in the comment section below. If you are back again, it is always good to have you. Take a second and say hello as well. Um, oh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. The button's about right down there. Get notified when new videos come out. Either way, my name is Julia Christina and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of my incredible membership community, The Shift Society, of which many of you here are a part of. I have many shifters here watching today, so I wanted to give you a special hello and a special shout out. Let me know in the comments if you are a shifter and then I can say hello to you. Um, oh, if you wanna find out more about The Shift Society, the information is in the description. You can find out more, get on the wait list there. I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And contrary and sort of counterintuitively, avoiding things that trigger you is holding you back, even though you think that getting rid of the thing that is challenging you is making things better. The opposite is true. And this is because when we avoid anything or anyone that we find challenging, what we are saying is that the people and the circumstances and the things around us have more control over our minds and emotions than we do. So then what we do is we either avoid, if we find something, something or someone difficult, we avoid them, we ghost them, we alienate them, we cut them off, we cut them out, or we avoid doing things, right? We avoid putting ourselves in situations that are gonna challenge us and we prevent ourselves from trying new things, from pushing ourselves, from moving beyond that sort of struggle and getting to the place where we can have what we want, where we can achieve what we want, where we can accomplish and grow and learn and expand, that that is on the other side of that, that avoiding everything and everyone that makes you uncomfortable, you might think is gonna make you more comfortable. And it will, it will make you more comfortable in the moment. But what you are gonna find is your world and your experience of the world and of your life is gonna become very small. It's become gonna become very reduced because part of being human is having to deal with other humans that sometimes piss us off. Part of being human is having to deal with circumstances that we find challenging so that we can learn and grow from them, so that we can build our resilience muscles, so that we can show ourselves that we can handle hard things and not giving up quite so easily. So avoiding everything or everyone, keeping us stuck, 
right? And keeping us, you know, really sort of reducing our world to only things that please us and that we find pleasant, which is nice for in the short term, but in the bigger picture and in the long term, it's a very limited experience and it doesn't give us any opportunity to grow and to expand. So there's that part of it. And then, like I mentioned, there's the other part where we start thinking that we need to control everything and everyone around us in order to be okay. So we start trying to control the people in our lives. You need to talk to me like this. You need to, you need to do this for me. You need to know these needs that I have. You have to text me back within this certain amount of time. You have to use this particular like tone in your emails. You have to do these things like, right? You have to do all this so that I can feel loved, right? And we kind of put all of these parameters and all these ideas and all these expectations on other people. And then we try to control them so that we can feel okay, so that we don't have to feel uncomfortable, so that we don't have to deal with ourselves if they don't do these things. We don't don't have to deal with what we're gonna make it mean if they don't or if they do, depending on the circumstance. And so you can see how messy it gets when we rely so much on everything around us being a certain way so that we can feel a certain way, or if it doesn't, we just avoid the whole thing. That is a whole lot more stressful and anxiety producing, trying to control everything and every, everyone around us, that is a lot more stressful and anxiety producing than sometimes having things not go our way and then learning how to manage our own minds and emotions within that. One of my favorite sayings that I posted once on on Instagram, by the way, and I think it went over a lot of people's heads. I think it is brilliant and profound. Maybe, Maybe it's just that people didn't get it. Maybe it's that they just didn't think it was brilliant and profound the way that I did. But either way, I didn't get much, uh, not very many people responded well to it. But I think that it is so important and when you truly embrace it, it will change your life. So the saying is, if you want to stop getting splinters in your toes, you can either run around and try and pad the world in rubber, or you can put on a pair of shoes. And that's what it means to be able to handle and learn how to handle the things in life that we find difficult or challenging or triggering instead of running, avoiding, or controlling. So when you get triggered, when you have an intense flood of emotions that comes up after something or someone has happened, instead of running from it, get curious. Why is this bothering me? Why am I having these emotions come up? What am I making it mean? Am I believing what this person said? Am I reading into what they did? Do I have ideas or expectations of what they should do that they're not doing and now that is bothering me? Am I taking something personally? Or if it's about something in your outside world that didn't go the way that you wanted it to, am I making failure mean that I am a failure? Am I making a mistake mean that I am a mistake? Am I making a challenge mean something that I find challenging? If I'm feeling challenged by it, am I making it mean that I'm not good enough or strong enough or capable enough? Instead of running away or reacting, take a second, take a step back and get curious. What is coming up in me right now? And when we learn how to do that, We open up such a profound world of understanding within ourselves. And then when we have that understanding, then we can do some work on it. Then we can do some reflection on it and actually look at, is this what I want to think about this, right? If this person did this and I'm making it mean that they're awful or that I'm awful or whatever, is that actually what I want to think about it? Is that healthy? Is that helpful? Is that serving? And if not, what do I want to do about it instead? So an example from my own life. This happened a little while ago. Um, This was, you know, a more recent time. I don't get super triggered all that often anymore, which is really kind of amazing. Um, But actually not when you understand how the human brain works and how learning how to manage our minds and emotions and how neurobiology and neuroscience works, all of that. When you understand all of that, then it's not actually that profound when you do the work and then you get the results. (laughs) 
<laughs> Funny how. But um, a little while ago, I had made plans with a friend and I was really looking forward to seeing this friend, a dear, dear friend that I hadn't seen in very long. We are going to get, or I hadn't seen in a really long time because of, you know, the pandemic. Um, and uh, we were finally going to get together. We were going to meet outside with our kids and we were going to sit and have some time together. Our kids were going to play. I was looking so forward to it. Um, and then kind of near the last minute, she asked to postpone. And immediately, which was kind of, I was kind of curious about it and fascinated by it because my brain hadn't done this in a long time. Um, but my brain started making all kinds of drama around this. My brain started reading into what her wanting to postpone the plans meant about me, meant about our friendship, meant about my worth and my value and all this stuff. And my brain started creating all this, all these stories around it. That was obviously leaving me to feel terrible, right? I triggered it. Her canceling the plans triggered old feelings of rejection, unworthiness, shame, you name it. It was all coming up, which was really fascinating. But in the moment, it didn't feel fascinating. It didn't feel interesting. It felt awful. And in that moment, I had a, I had a choice. I could just say, forget you. Like in my head, I could just say, forget you. You know, if you're not going to treat me the way that I want you to treat me, which means, you know, following through on the plans that I was, that were obviously, you know, I was looking forward to. <laughs> if you're not going to do that, then I'm not going to be friends with you and I'm just going to avoid you and I'm going to, you know, be friends with someone who follows through on their commitments or whatever that is. Or I could have texted her back with some kind of guilt trip. I could have diffused my own feelings by trying to make her feel bad by saying something to try and make her feel guilty for canceling it, for, for changing the plans. And that's often what we do, right? When we're feeling triggered, we avoid or we react through something. Maybe it's passive aggressive, maybe it's aggressive. But I could have written her something back that, you know, in my attempt to try and make her feel guilty about it, to try and make her feel bad because I was feeling bad. Instead, I got curious and I took a step back and I was like, I feel terrible right now. Why do I feel terrible? My heart is pounding. I have kind of those shame tinglies in my armpits, that sinking feeling in my stomach. What's going on? This is so curious. What am I making this mean about me? What am I making her desire to postpone our plans or cancel or reschedule? What am I making this mean about me? And why am I feeling terrible? Then I did a little bit of digging and, you know, just sort of started to see that it was, you know, one of my old shame triggers that had come out again, which by the way, as you're doing this work, it doesn't mean that if you're doing this work and, and doing the healing and the growing that you're never still going to be a human being who has human feelings, who still sometimes feels terrible, who has fear or anxiety or shame or self-doubt or whatever that is that comes up. That's just part of having a human brain. The goal is to make it less frequent and less intense and not let it hold you back, get in your way and kind of create messes in your life. That is the goal, but it doesn't mean that it's never going to show up. So I was, yeah, here is this, this old friend, this old shame around rejection and not being lovable. And I had to get really curious about it. And then I was able to look at it, to challenge it, to move through it, to get to the other side of it, to clear up, manage my mind around it, clear up my thoughts around it, calm my emotions about it. And then I was able to respond instead of react to her. And, you know, it actually it was... <laughs> It's funny. It was so much less dramatic than my brain was making it. The reason why she wanted to, it came out afterwards. So the reason why she wanted to postpone was because there was some stuff going on in their yard and they had some construction going. She didn't think it would be as fun for everyone. So she was actually, instead of, you know, wanting to postpone because she didn't care about me, it was actually because she wanted to make sure that when we did get together, it was really great and there was no limitations and we could just have the most fun. So she was thinking about me. So, but it's interesting what our human brains do and the drama our human brains create. But regardless, before I even had that information, I did the work to clear up my own thoughts about it so that I could address it and respond to her in a way that was clean and classy instead of loaded and messy and kind of icky. 
if I had just avoided her, if I had guilt tripped her, if I had gotten angry about it and reacted, lashed out or whatever, I would have denied myself all of that opportunity to do my own learning and growing and even more healing. I would have missed out on all of that experience, that rich and rewarding experience that comes from getting curious instead of getting away as quickly as possible or getting reactive. Now, I'm not saying put yourself in any kind of challenging situation, difficult situation, be with difficult people, people, people that you find difficult, that you find challenging, not to do that 24-7. You're going to get exhausted. It takes a lot of work to manage your mind and sort yourself out when you are feeling triggered. So I'm not saying do that all the time. You're going to get exhausted and worn out. It's going to, you know, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to keep it up. It's just, you can't, you can't sprint a marathon. You have to kind of pace yourself. You have to be able to refuel. You need to be able to have some reprieve in there. And so having circumstances and people in your life that are easy, that flow well, that you're like, I don't have to work so hard at this. It's comfortable and it's pleasant. Have that in your life, absolutely. But not only that, have things and people and exposure to things that do challenge you, experiences that challenge you. That is where the growth really happens. We don't grow if there's no tension. If there's no discomfort, we don't grow. Growth comes when there's a reason for it, when we're trying to work something out. But if everything's great, then we're not really trying to work anything out and we don't get to grow. Now, as I mentioned, there is a caveat to this. If you are coming out of a traumatic experience, a traumatic relationship, if you have been enduring a lot of intense hardship for a long time and you're feeling very emotionally raw, where you're struggling, you know, you're struggling a lot, don't do this now. <laughs> don't put yourself, it sounds like you've, you know, if that's the case, you've been in really challenging situations for a long time. It's time to take a break from that, to take a step back from that, to have that safe space to do the healing and the growing and to find the ground underneath your feet to get more solid and secure in who you are, to get more solid and secure in your thoughts and your feelings and just get into that place where you can sort through and handle challenges, right? If you've got a gaping wound, going forward and continuing to get poking the wound is just going to make the wound worse. You have to heal the wound and do a lot of healing of that wound first before you can go in again and kind of have, you know, get a little bit poked, right? And so that is my caveat. Take the time to do the work and then I wanna invite you to put yourself into some challenging situations and to work on managing your mind and emotions while you are in them. If this is something you want to work on, come and join us in the Shift Society. This is what we do there, is we do that work to build that solid foundation, to get more solid and secure in who you are so that you can handle whatever or whoever is happening in your life. Get more information about that in the description below. Also, while you wait for registration for the Shift Society to open, if you want to learn to be less reactive and start to feel just more grounded every day um, and not feel like your emotions are on such a roller coaster, then get my 10 minute guided mindfulness exercise. It's free. It's a 10 minute audio exercise that is going to help your brain find that calm and grounded place when it is feeling reactive, emotional, and chaotic. So it is a really good one. I have people that message me and say that they've been listening to it every day for a, you know, a year and how much solace they find in that and how it's helped them just learn, you know, train their brain to feel more calm and grounded. Um, so you can grab that audio. It's free in the description below. Get on the wait list for the Shift Society. Always good to have you here. Tell me what connected with you. Always great to hear that as well. And until next time, take good care.